welcome to the worship services at First Baptist Church March. <coughs> it's good to see each and every one of you here. And for those who are viewing via the internet, welcome. Janet and I went up north to see the grandkids play soccer. And we always joke, about the time we get to Malone, the head starts clearing up. The voice is not rattly, and we just have a grand time. Let us come back when about the time we hit below. <coughs> and I don't know, it's just healthy air. But it's good to be here. It's good to be here with each and every one of you as we offer praise and worship to our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ, and God Almighty. Our opening scripture text comes out of John 13, starting in verse 12. So when he had washed their feet and taken their garments and reclined at the table again, he said to them, Do you know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord. And you're right, for I am he. Then if the Lord and the teacher washes your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I gave you an example that you should do as I do to you. Today's hymn service is focusing on discipleship and service. Let's pray. Precious Lord, thank you for a new day. Thank you for the beauty of the morning, the coolness of the air, the invitation of fall. We give thanks, O Lord, for each season. We give thanks for the anticipated color changes and, and the re renewal of, of life and energy. O Lord, thank you for your creation and for, for taking care of us. Lord, we pray now that as we offer praise and worship to your mighty name, that everything we say and do, the songs you hear, the prayers we pray, the words from your, from your living word will all be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, thank you for Jesus and his saving grace. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. If it's convenient, won't you stand for our opening hymn? I'm thine, O oh Lord, I have worked by force, and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith, and be closer, drawn to thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer. No. 
Let's remain standing and affirm our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. It is a joy to be here this morning. Um, walked outside. Ooh, it's so, it was so nice and cool. It was really, really good. So uh, times are changing. The weather's changing. That's a good thing. Uh, as we look at our announcements, we have youth tonight from 5 to 6.30. That's our 6th through 12th grade. And then in the morning, Brew Crew is back. So if you are a Brew Crew participant, come and enjoy breakfast. Everybody is excited to have this back. So um, they had a few weeks off, and so it's going to be really good tomorrow. 8 to 10, come have breakfast with us. And then Wednesday, we're in our second week. This, this week will be our second week of this study, Goliath Must Fall. Again, if you can't come, I have extra books. If anyone wants one, it's, it's going to be a really, really good study. Um, 6 to 7.30. All right, any other announcements? Anything going on? Anybody needs to bring up? We have jam that starts on September 17th. We did our jam sponsorships, and we are about, I believe we're at about 70 kids sponsored so far. Um, and when I looked this morning, um, we have a few few days left for them to register, but right now we're at 179 registered for jam. That is amazing. That is an amen, y'all. Amen that 179 kids will flow through this church and learn more about Jesus. That's, that's amazing. So if... Uh, I know our friendship class did some did some uh, sponsorship, so if you want to do a sponsorship personally, let me know. Um, I've told people, several people have come and said I have $10, and so we've put their $10 in and grouped that with other people that only had $10 to give, and so that was fine, so that's sponsored a kid. So if you want to participate in that, just let me know. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Holy and gracious God, we are so blessed. That you love us and for the ways that you show yourself to us and show us how much you love us. And so, God, we just thank you for this time together, whether here in person or online, that we are fellowshipping as the body of Christ in this moment. And so, God, we thank you for your presence here. We thank you for the cooler weather coming. And, God, we just ask that, that those that are not able to be with us today, that they would be blessed and feel your presence wherever they are, just as we do. God, we come and we pray over our offerings that will be given today. And we ask that they be multiplied to, to benefit your kingdom and the call of ministry you have on this body of Christ. Lord, we pray for these kids that will come into jam. No matter how many there are, God, let us be your hands and feet to them. Let us be a place of safety and sanctuary and hope. Let them come in here and learn deeper, deeper about you, Lord God, and about your son and what's been done for them. God, may we be your instruments of education to these kids and a sanctuary of safety for them as they come in here. God, allow us to feed their hearts and their spirits and their souls and their bodies as they worship here. God, we gather to worship today together, and as we begin this time, we pray the prayer that your Son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If it's convenient, would you stand with me? Praise God from the Lord.
Using the scripture text of John 4 and 14, whoever drinks the water, I will give, I will give him. Whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Richard Blanchard was a Methodist preacher, foreign missionaries who were in China. He not only preached, but he enjoyed writing music. This one is it said that he wrote in about 20 minutes. Now, this is where I'm embellishing the story a little bit. It's called Fill My Cup, Lord. When was the last time you was in a restaurant? You had a wonderful breakfast. And the waitress, wait person came by and says, would you like a refill? And just that little little gesture just added more to your day. But he had enjoyed a breakfast. And his physical needs were fulfilled. So then Richard Blanchard wrote this. Fill my cup, Lord. May God be praised. Like a woman at the well, I was seeking for things that could not satisfy. And then I heard my Savior speaking, draw from my well that never shall run dry. Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make me whole. So my brother, if the thing this world gave you leaves hunger that won't pass away. My blessed Lord will come and save you if you'll kneel to him and humbly pray. Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up, and make me whole. 
Sid is so good about defining songs and telling you all about songs, and today I have one to tell you about. In 1982, the number one song on the Billboard Christian charts was a song titled El Shaddai. It won the GMA Song of the Year in 1983 and was sung by many different people, but Amy Grant sang the most popular and most beautiful version, in my Amen. opinion. Amen. And the chorus says this, El Shaddai, El Shaddai, El Oyana, Adonai. Age to age, you're still the same by the power of the name. El Shaddai, El Shaddai, Erekam Kana Adonai. I will praise and lift you high, El Shaddai. Breaking it down and looking at the meaning of those names, here's what the songwriter was saying. God Almighty, God Almighty, God Most High, please, I call out to you. Throughout time, you have never changed. Your name is the most powerful. God Almighty, God Almighty, I love you, my Lord. I will praise and lift you high, God Almighty. Amen. Our scripture comes from Genesis 2, all the way back to the beginning. <clears throat> Verses 4 through 7. The first three verses begin about um, talking about what God created on the sixth day and then on the seventh day. And all this creation was laid in front of him and on the seventh day he rested. The very next scripture says this. These are the generations of heaven and earth when they were created. In the day that Yahweh God made earth and heaven. Before any plant of the field was on earth and before any plant of the field had sprung up. Because Yahweh God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no human being to cultivate the ground. But a stream would rise from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. When Yahweh God formed the man of dust from the ground, and he blew into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living creature. This is the word of God for you, the people of God. Thank you, God. Let's pray. Gracious and holy, holy God Almighty, we do praise and lift you high with our voices in song and prayer and the reading of the scripture text and our prayers to you, Lord God. So may this message come out. God, may it be your voice that falls on people's hearts. Move me aside and God, let your words fall upon our ears and penetrate into our hearts. We ask all this in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. So over these last three weeks, we have looked at how the Bible contains these, these various names for God, um, each of which represents this unique way that God reveals himself to humanity. Uh, some of the names given for God throughout scripture are these. Elohim, which is the Lord Most High. Adonai, which is the Lord over all. El Shaddai, as you heard, which is God Almighty. Jehovah Jireh, who is the Lord, our provider. Jehovah Rapha, the God, our healer. Jehovah Nisi, who is the Lord, our banner. Do y'all remember, this song has just been on my heart. Do y'all remember in Bible school that uh, his banner over me is love? Remember that song from so long ago? We used to sing that all the time. I never knew that was Jehovah Nisi. That's his banner over me. They would post this banner and, and plant these, these posts whenever they would fight this battle. And they would believe that God was their banner that hung over them. And that's who they were fighting for. That's who your God is. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace. Jehovah Rohai, who is the Lord our shepherd. These names are not just titles or, or labels, but they are the true reflection of God's character and who he is to us. His whole nature to us. The names give us insight into, into who God is and how he relates to us. And so we looked the first week at El Rohi, the God who sees. And then last week we looked at Jehovah Siri, which means the Lord is our rock. These are great descriptions for God's character and what he does for us. But when you get more personal with someone, when you become more friendly with someone, when you begin to love someone, you don't use a title for them. You use a personal name. And the most personal of God's names is Yahweh, a name that truly represents all of these various uh, moral attributes that God displays in relationship to us, his creation, as we heard when he created the first human being. Yahweh is God's first name. The name reveals his nature as this, this personal God who desires a personal relationship with his people. 
our text today is the first time we truly see that name, God's first name, mentioned in Scripture. So God's name is this four Hebrew consonants. It's called the tetragrammation. Tetragrammation. That's not a definition for anything else. And if you look up tetragrammaton is actually how it's pronounced. If you look that up, if you go to Google and look up tetragrammaton, it is going to say that is the four Hebrew consonants for God's name. It doesn't describe anything else but God. In Greek, tetra means four, and gramma means consonants. So this name is truly usually translated as YHVA or YHWA. And it can be translated in these many ways. Uh, the one who causes it all. The one who brings everything into existence. The ground of all being. The source of all life. Many translations, but it encompasses all of God. And so the name YHWA, which we pronounce Yahweh, it's the most common term by which God is spoken about in the Bible. It, appear, it appears roughly 6,800 times in the Bible. The name of God is especially associated, this Yahweh name is associated with his, with his holiness, with his hatred of sin, but also with his gracious provision of redemption and grace. And so this commentary that comes out in the Ryrie Study Bible that I look at often says this, the holiness of the name Yahweh coupled with the commandment to not misuse that name of God resulted in the Jewish practice of never pronouncing this name when speaking or reading scripture. It would actually be substituted with Adonai when the text would read Y-H-W-H. -H. Now in English, it was first translated Jehovah. That Y-H-V-H -H was translated Jehovah, which was the vowels of Adonai put together with the consonant of the Y-H-W-A. And that's where they came out with that. That's the most significant name for God in the Old Testament is Yahweh. And in most of the translations, the name appears as Lord. So you're not going to open up the NIV, and very rarely we even open up the King James Version, which was truly King David's Bible, right? Barry, that was a joke, y'all. Come on, wake up. <laughs> Everybody believes that was King David's Bible. So very rarely you're going to open that Bible up and find the name Yahweh. You almost have to go all the way back to the Hebrew and the Greek scripture. I pulled this translation today, the L-E-B, because it uses the name Yahweh. And in, but, but you don't find that Y-H until the very, you go back to the true Greek lettering. But most of the common everyday translations now use the word Lord in place of Yahweh. And I want you to remember in the Torah... If you remember, the Torah is the first five books of the Hebrew Bible. Uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. It's also known as the Pentateuch or the five books of Moses. So in the Torah, in Genesis 1-1, this is what it says in the true Hebrew wording. In the beginning, Elohim, God. Elohim created the heaven and the earth. Now the name Elohim means supreme one or, or mighty one. It's the term used for God at that moment. Nothing else was used except Elohim. The change from Elohim to Yahweh happens in chapter 2. Now think back to what happens in Genesis chapter 2. The content of Genesis chapter 2 describes the creation of man and woman. And as we know with the creation of man, there begins this special relationship which is distinct and separate from all of God's other lower creation, right? It enters, God enters into this communion with, with man that he's made in his own image. Yahweh is this God of relationships, this personal God. He's not a God who, who created things and withdrew to let them just kind of do their own thing and, and go as they will, right? He's this one true God who's personal and intimately involved with all of his creation. But it's only with mankind created in his image that he wants to have this, this personal and this intimate relationship, right? And so this change from Elohim in chapter 1 happens to chapter 2 with Yahweh. Now, it's in the book of Exodus when God first speaks to Moses, right? It's when he deals with him and when he's talking to him. And he, uh, it's the story of the burning bush. And it's when God reveals himself to Moses as Yahweh. But he says in Exodus 3, I am who I am. When he asks who he is, he says, I am who I am. I am the God who is. 
God who is not I was, not the God I was, or the God I will be, but the God I am. That's important to know that God is the God of I am. He exists in the eternal presence, not restricted by time or not restricted by space or anything else. He has existed eternally, no matter how difficult that is to wrap our minds around it. You try to tell a child, you try to tell Boone Crawford, because I'm telling you, he will, he will press me on it every time we talk about it. He wants to know, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He wants to know, well, where was the beginning? Who created the beginning? Well, God did. God created it all. But when did God come on the scene? Well, God was just always there. Yeah, but there's a beginning to something, Momo. There's always a beginning. You can't wrap your mind around it. And you can't explain it to a kid because you can't understand it yourself, right? We can easily quote the scripture and just say God was always there. But you can't explain it. It's kind of like communion. You can't explain the grace you feel when you partake of the bread and body. You can't wrap your mind around the fact that God has existed eternally. Always there. But that's the God I am. That is I am. I'm here. I was there. I was here. I'm going to be there. I am the God I am. I am the God eternally present. So how do you pronounce his name? I chose this picture for a reason. Because I want you to know what God's name sounds like. Now no one may truly know the, the true original pronunciation of the name because it was forbidden since the 2nd or 3rd century B.C. That's because God's name was pronounced in ancient Israel only by the high priest. They were the only ones allowed to do this, and that was only once a year on the Jewish holiday of Yom Kippur, after the destruction of the second temple and the demise of the office of the high priesthood, God's name was no longer pronounced. No one used that pronunciation. It went to uh, the YHVA, went to the English pronunciation of Jehovah. That's where Jehovah came from. And then the YHWH is where Yahweh comes from. No longer did they use this pronunciation. What we do know from biblical scholars is that those four letters of God's Hebrew names are soft consonants. And so if you were to pronounce them without any vowels, the sound that emerges is like you're taking a breath. So I want you to focus on that. I just want you to listen to yourself for just a second. Then as you breathe it in, they say don't move your tongue, don't move your lips, just breathe in and breathe out. That is how God's name was pronounced. I want you to think about that for just a second. That if the yaw is the sound of breathing in, and the way or the va is the sound of you breathing out, I want you to think about it that from your very first breath emerging onto this earth was the name of God on your lips. And the very last breath you will take as you leave this earth and join God in glory is the name of God on your lips. God's name is truly the breath of life. Genesis says he breathed into him the breath of life. See, we exist, we live, we are solely because we breathe. Solely because we breathe. And we don't think about it. That means without even thinking about it, we're constantly saying God's name. Constantly calling on God, right? How amazing that every single time we breathe, we're pronouncing. How amazing that God's name, rather than dividing one human being from another, brings us all together. It brings us together as we call out the, right, the, the whole name. Every human being breathes, right? Without anything, they breathe. God's name is not owned by any particular religious tradition. The name of God is universal and known to everyone. Think about it. Everyone breathes. Those who know God, breathe. Those who don't know God, breathe. That means those who know God are saying his name and they now know. You now know you're saying his name every time you breathe. Those who don't know God are calling out to him and they don't even know it. That means, y'all, even an atheist is saying God's name. They can't help it. They can't help but take a breath and breathe it out and say God's name. How amazing that God's true name, rather than dividing us from nature, brings nature and us together. Think about it. Not just humans breathe, animals breathe, trees and plants breathe, the earth breathes. 
God's name teaches us that all life forms are interrelated and interdependent. God's Hebrew name teaches us a better way to know that God is present in our lives. We are calling out to him with every single breath. So how do you bring God's presence closer into your life? You just breathe. You just breathe, and you focus on your breath. If you ask a runner, uh, a, a meditator, a yoga practitioner, uh, if you ask a gym instructor, they all know, my pulmonologist would tell you, breathing takes you to a higher, deeper level, right? When you really focus on your breathing, you can just focus and listen to your breath, and you can go into this deeper calmness, what do we tell our kids when they get upset? What do we tell them when they get scared or mad or what's, whatever's going on? We say, take a breath, calm down, take a breath. That's what we need to tell ourselves now. When we need to feel closer to God, when we need to feel his presence, we just have to tell ourselves to calm down and take a breath. And with every inhale and with every single exhale, you can know that God flows in and through you and by breathing, you can discover that God is not this far away entity, far up in the heavens, leaving you here on your own. He's closer than you ever realized. He is simply a breath away. And God wants us to know that his name encounters all glory. He's just not this distant deity we pay homage to, right? He is God Almighty. El Shaddai Erechim Kana Adonai. He wants us to understand that. He is compassionate and slow to anger, abounding in love and steadfast faithfulness. He is worthy of our praise. And so whatever you call him, if you call him God or, or Lord God or Father or Heavenly Father or Abba Father or Dad or Daddy, whatever it is, whatever you call him, he's right there. Here's our problem. This past week I had to go to the dentist because I had a broken tooth. And as they started doing all these scans and all this kind of stuff, at 53 years old, I realized that my teeth are all crowded together, and they're pushing at each other, and they're cracking each other. So now, tomorrow, they have to go in, and they have to break six teeth and fill six teeth to make space for them not to break anymore. And I started thinking as I was laying there in the chair, he has to make room for my teeth to move into the right position. We have to take time to make room. We have to take time to make room for God to move into the right position, to give him space. And the way we do that is by calming ourselves, taking a breath in whatever situation we're in. And the good thing is you can breathe wherever you are, right? It's not like praying and closing your eyes. You can't do that while you're driving. You can pray, but you can't close your eyes while you're driving, right? It's like worshiping and praising God when you're in the middle of a, of a crowded theater. You can't exactly lift. You could, but they might yell at you. But you can't exactly lift your hands and start dancing to God and singing and praising the Lord. It'd be out of place, right? But you can breathe anywhere. Anywhere. That means you can call upon the name of God, whatever you call him, anywhere. So today, for 10 seconds, we're just going to close our eyes. And we're going to focus on our breathing. I want you to focus on your breathing in and out, calling upon the name of God. Let's pray. Holy God, we thank you so much for loving us. We thank you for being God Almighty. We thank you for being our provider and our healer and our shepherd, our calmness and our peace, our provider, our banner, our creator, and our most high God. And in all of these descriptions, the thing we thank you most for is being our all-encompassing God. You are everything to us and for us. God, help us in this week to focus more. Help us to focus more on you that as we're sitting and doing something, as we hear our own breath, remind us of your love for us. Remind us that we are breathing you in and breathing you out 
over and over again. Fill us, Lord God. Fill our cup, fill our lungs, fill our lives with all that you are and all that you have. Help us, Lord God, to make room for you. To get in the right position, the right frame of mind, and the right place to serve you and serve your people. Help us, God, to be more tomorrow than we were today and more the next day and yet even more the next. Help us to be, Lord God, all you created us to be as we take this simple action of breathing your name in and out. Yahweh God, we love you. And we ask all of this in your son's precious name. And all God's people said, amen. 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 <coughs> Won't you stand with me for our closing hymn? When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He sheds on our way. While we do His good will, He abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other Trusting that with every breath you breathe, your God walks with you.